Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yes. And uh, I want to tell you that the Lord has everything under control. Amen? Every, everything, everything. And uh, he's in charge. He's in control. We thank the Lord for his presence in our life. Father, we pray anyone that's gone through this right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, and we take at the head of the year, the new year, we pray in the name of Jesus against COVID, Lord, in this way, Father, in this way. We bind that disease right now in Jesus' name. That virus, whatever it is, Lord, we bind it in the name of Jesus. Lord, it was, Lord, we know it was cooked up in China, but it really was cooked up in hell itself. It was created in hell. And Lord, the enemy, I believe right now, he thinks he's won this and he hasn't. He's a loser and he's lost. And Lord, we confess with our mouths, believe in our hearts that you are dealing with this. Lord, we come against the spirit of death in our city and all over the country in Jesus' name. We say, spirit of death, you have no place here. We command you to leave in the name of Jesus. We command you to leave the hospitals, the, the, the rooms, uh, everywhere, Father, where people are suffering with this. Lord, we command this to stop now in Jesus' name, right now. And, and Lord, we, we, don't, we were not going to let it say next week. We're going to say now in Jesus' name. And so we thank you, Lord, and we take a stand right now as a church. Uh, we're going we're gonna to stand against this. Yeah. Lord, we're not going to say it's something we have to go through. We're going to preempt this thing like Ed was talking about in Don, a preemptive strike on this thing in Jesus' name, the very root of it. The axe is laid at the root of the tree. Hallelujah. And we command this thing to cease and stop in Jesus' name. And uh, Lord, we command all the powers of hell and darkness to cease and stop in Jesus' name. This is not going to work because the King of kings and the Lord of lords is over this. And Jesus, you went to the cross, you suffered, you bled, and you died, Lord, to save us, to heal us, to deliver us, Lord, from all the works of the enemy. Lord, that says that in the scripture, all the works of the enemy. So, Lord, we thank you and we stand on your word today and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. I share a little scripture with you this morning because I was to ask the Lord to uh, give give us some good scripture to start the year off with. Good, good verses, good strong uh, foundation that we could start the year off with. And so I titled the message, Entering, Entering 2021, uh, and uh, full submission is necessary. Amen? Full, it's like somebody looking at you and saying, cooperate, cooperate with me. Now I feel that the Lord is just is asking us to cooperate with him in the coming year. And uh, not to follow a plan that we might have but to follow his plan as close as we can discern it. Amen? Isn't that good news? I think that's good news. I think that's a good way to walk. I don't know about you, but even, even the year 2021 looks good to me. That The numbers, uh, I, I've, I've seen 2020, and you got those two big zeros looking at you. Amen? And it's so good to go by billboards and to see on the billboards, Happy New Year 2021. And even the one at the end looks, looks like it's happy. For some reason, you know, I don't know. That's just that's just what I see. But it's a year of, of God's direction. Uh, 20, uh, 21 is actually the year, Hebrew year. Uh, five eight. What, what what is it? Five eight seven one. Five eight seven one. Which uh, five seven eight one. Five seven eight one. Thank you. Okay, I knew I knew I'd, I'd get some help here. Uh, five seven eight one. And, and you know what was really weird? I got it written down right here. On <laughs> so just so you know, just so you know what's going on. Amen. Five seven eight one. Look at it, Ed. Okay, I will do that. But uh, and, and five stands for an eye. The seven stands in the Hebrew language stands for a plow. The eight stands for a fence. And the, the number one stands for an ox. And so if you kind of run it all together, uh, uh, it, it actually forms a sentence. But we understand the, the eye and the plow, you know, got vision and plowing. But the, the last two numbers really get me. Uh, it's a fence and an ox. And a fence means separation. And so God is separating out of people in, in the coming year. And the ox, of course, is strength or leadership and God is is strengthening and establishing strong leadership over our life amen by his Holy Spirit with his leaders that he appoints and anoints 
Amen. So we, we need to realize that and look forward to the coming year that way. I did say it forms a sentence, and uh, it, it, uh, if you run all the words together, it kind of sense, it brings a sense of to look at our work, our own work, and to nail down the voice of our leaders. Okay? To nail down the voice of our leaders. And God's going to do that. He's going to nail down, and there's going to be a strong voice. We've been hearing that uh, in the beginning of the year through some certain prophets and, and so on and so forth. Okay, so anyway, it's going to require full submission. I want to read this verse to you because I've been hearing it over and over again. I read it and I thought it was wonderful, wonderful direction for me in the coming year. But then I heard other people on the radio. How many have you heard, any of you heard this verse? Being, I've heard it on the radio countlessly ever since I read it. And it's Isaiah 43, 18. And it says this, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. This is Isaiah talking, the prophet. I'll read that again. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Can I tell you? God's doing a new thing. I'm up on my toes here. God's doing a new thing. We need to find out what that is. We need to see what it is. And we need to flow with it. Praise God. So it says, verse 19, see, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? So, you know, we're just not going to know it with our, with our Noah right away. Amen? God is going to, we're going to see the hand of God at work. And we're going to know he's doing a new thing. And we could be assured of the fact that we can walk in it with him. And, and he gives us an, a little hint on what it is. He says, I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And so if, if you look around us, you can find a wilderness and a wasteland right. pretty quickly. Yeah. And what does he say? He's going to make a way in that wilderness. And he's going to put streams in the wasteland. So guess what? The wilderness is not going to be as wildernessy, <laughs> if that's a word. <coughs> and, the, and the wasteland is, is not going to be, it's not going to be a wasteland anymore because there's going to be streams in it. It's not going to, uh, another version says streams in the desert. And that's what we read as our devotional in the morning. Amen? And, and God is going to bring, in the midst of a dry and weary land, God's going to bring streams to us. Amen? He's going to refresh us in the coming year. He's going to, you know, where we thought it was impossible, he's going to make a way, praise God. Amen? If I was a southern preacher right now, I would stand up and say, my God is a way maker. Hallelujah. <laughs> because he is. That's what he does. And he's going to do it more in the coming year. So, uh, praise God. Let's get excited about it. Amen? Amen? Praise God. So, we're going to, I want to look at James chapter 4, because I believe this gives us a foundation for the coming year, and gives us good advice. How many of you need some good advice? Raise your hand. I need some good advice. As a matter of fact, I got a little, I, I got a little uh, thing on my desk. It says, I have some advice for you. Well, this morning, I've got some advice for you. It doesn't come from me. It comes from the scripture. And it's very, very important. So, James chapter 4, verse 1, he is, uh, and how many of you know, James was a pastor, so he's got a pastor's heart. And he's going he's gonna to speak to you with a pastor's heart. Right? Not with a prophet's heart. You know, he's not going to come with the hammer. James is just going just gonna to lay it out and says, here it is, here's all the goodness of God. Everybody just enjoy the goodness of God. Amen? He might talk about issues, which he's going to do, but he's, he's laying out God's goodness and God's direction for us. Okay, so he goes on. He, he opens up James chapter 4 uh, with this. He says, what causes fights and quarrels among you? And the real point in this paragraph, I like to preach out of paragraphs because I like context. I don't just like to, you know, shake the bush and shoot the first thing that comes out. I like the whole context. So James gives this all to us in context. And so what he's really going to say to us is, how do we receive from God? There's a way to receive from God. Wouldn't that be nice to know in the new year? Mm -hmm. Amen? How many, you know, everybody in this room has received from God. I know you have. Yeah. But what, how do you stand on solid ground to receive from Almighty God in the coming year? Well, he opens it up and he says, what causes fights and quarrels among you? So you know right away. 
that if you're if you have a tendency to quarrel and fight, there's there's a war going on inside of you. You got to know that. Amen. If you get into a lot of fights and quarrels. So he says this. He says, "Don't they come from your desires that battle within you?" And he's going to develop this a little more. All right. So we got a war going on. It would be nice to know what the war is, right? As I mean, I'm just talking normally. As normal people, amen, not as the spiritual giants that we become, but as normal people, you know, we have battles and fights within us, right? Number two, verse number two, you desire, but you do not have. Now, God's not saying you can't have. He's just saying you don't have. There's a difference between can have and don't have, all right? Think about that. He says, but you do not have, so you kill you covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. And the Lord wants us to know that we don't have to, we don't have to quarrel and fight. We don't have to put our hands around somebody's neck to get what we want. We don't have to go kill ourselves to go get what we want. He says there's a better way. Praise God. Isn't that awesome? He says, you do not have because... You do not ask God. Well, now wait a minute. We ask God all the time, don't we? We ask God for things all the time. He says, you do not ask. You do not have because you do not ask God. So there must be a way to ask God. You see what he's saying? He says, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. He waited for the last line to tell us what that was. Amen? And I pray, I pray in the coming year, I'm just going to read this. I'm not going to preach a lot about it. I just want you to get the word in you. But I pray that this year, this coming year, you will, you will believe God for things, for other people, and for things that will benefit the world and for the things around you. Amen? Rather than just believing them for things for yourself. There's nothing wrong with doing that either. Amen? If you need something, you need to talk to God about it. Amen? But most of it is, we ask God for things so we could do what we want. Let's begin to ask God for things. Notice I didn't say stop asking for things. But ask Him for things so you can do what He wants. Amen? Amen? Amen. Does that sound good? Praise God. All right, that's number one. Number two. So what is, what is uh, he's going to talk about friendship with the world. So what does that mean? So we're going to answer that as quickly as we can. He says, you adulterous people. Now, Pastor Ed, I thought you, you said James was a nice pastor. <laughs> and he's calling, he's calling the people adulterers. Well, there's a reason why he's doing it, because he are. All right? He says, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God. Now, a lot of people don't know what that really means. What it means is, if you're a friend with the world, you're God's enemy. That's pretty simple. See, you can't really be buddy-buddy with the world. You can't adopt its thinking. If you do, you're, you're, you're a practicing enemy of the throne of God. You're in league with Satan. And so, thank you, James, for, for telling us that. Amen? Because he says, therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think that Scripture says without reason that he, that means the Lord, the Lord jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? In other words, we're friends with the world, but God loves us. And, and he takes that to mean, and, and I, you know, I've, I've seen old-time writers use this word, that we are cheating on him. We all know what that means now. Uh, you know, the, 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 the media uses that word all the time. This one's cheating on that one, and that one's cheating on... But when we put it in terms with God, we're cheating on him when we become friends with the world. And he says, verse 6... But he gives more grace. You see, he's ready to give us grace. And there's a way that we'll receive his grace 
There is a way that we will receive his blessings. There is a way that we will receive his favor. Amen. That you might not be told on television, on the internet. There is a way to receive his favor. Amen. It's not popular, but here it goes. It says, God opposes the, cr the proud. That's why scripture says, God opposes the proud, but he shows favor to the humble. Mm -hmm. Favor to the humble. You can depend on this in the coming year. But God has gone to bring a lot of humility to people. A lot. How's he going to do it? He's been doing it in the past year. He's been doing it through the things that we've had to go through. He's been doing it, but, you know, not, we get, like this morning, we get messages of people that, that are strong in the kingdom of God that are passing away now. How do we... How do we stand? How do we go through this? How do we go through these tough, difficult times? How do we do it? By looking to the Lord, by depending on the Lord, by trusting the Lord, by listening to Him. He's going to do a new thing in the coming year. Are you ready? Or are you going to do, this, do it the same old way you did it in the last year? See, the Lord wants to know that. He wants to know that this morning. He wants us to stand on the fact that whatever happens, He is doing something and if we humble ourselves to what he's doing, we're going to be in line with he, what he wants. And we're going to be receiving from him. Amen? The bottom line of our life is this. That God opposes everything proud that we do. But if we walk in humility and submission to him, full submission I'm talking about. Because there are a lot of people walking around today that are in half submission. Do you know some people like that? I do. You know, they go they go to church, but I confessed it this morning. You confessed. <laughs> there you go. See, they get they go to church on Sunday. The rest of the week, they're just like the world, right? That's right. They're just like the world, and the thing is, they're not challenged by it at all. Who's challenging them? You know, that's that's what true love is. Amen. Amen. True love is is being giving them a challenge. And saying, no, that's not it. And if they pinch their nose and say, you're judging me, you know the answer to that. No, I'm not. I'm not judging you. I'm just speaking inspecting your fruit. That's speaking all. The truth. Yeah, I'm speaking because I love you. I'm speaking the truth to you. Not because I'm trying to be judgmental. Not because I'm trying to establish some kind of, of holiness movement. I just know one thing. If you're faithful, to God wants you to be faithful. He doesn't want you to be unfaithful. Amen? Amen? So in the coming year, God wants us to live a relationship where we're not acting adulterous. And, and I'm all for it, amen? Praise the Lord. So that's what friendship with the world means. But then I want you to see what full submission means. Because I believe he's leading us to this, that we fully submit ourselves to the Lord in the coming year. He says, submit yourselves, verse 7, then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Mm -hmm. So part, now he's going to give you a lot of details about, bless you. Uh, he's going to give you a lot of details about, bless you. He's going to give you a lot of details about submitting to him. And the first detail he gives you is to resist the devil. Amen. That's good. Resist the devil. See, we're here. You know, Jesus said in his word, he came to overcome the works of the devil. Mm -hmm. And if he came to overcome the works of the devil, then we should be resisting the devil. Oh, I don't want to do that because that's too weird. That's like charismatic. That's like, no, we resist him. If, does he tempt us? Everybody in the church would admit, uh, you know, this church or any other church in the world, that, that the enemy tempts him. So we need, what do we need to do? Resist him. Praise God. Amen? Amen. Then not only does it say resist him, but guess what happens when you resist him? He runs away. He flees. See, that, that, this morning we prayed. We prayed a lot. We rebuked the enemy. Amen? We bound the enemy. We used to have a friend in uh, Gillette. He was a Harvard graduate. He was a pastor of uh, one of the uh, high Orthodox. churches. The Ortho yeah, the Orthodox downtown. Church downtown. Great guy, really great guy. It's, it's amazing the friends that God gives us. But he, he, he used to love to hang out 
with all p groups of people and Christians, he used to love to hang out with Pentecostals. And he was anything but Pentecostal. He had icons in his church all over the walls and things. Uh, I mean, he was as, 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 as uh, high church as you can get. But he loved to hang out with the Pentecostals. Uh, he used to love to, uh, to hear Edie Reno pray. If you know how Edie Reno prays, he prays with authority and, and so on. And he would just marvel at it. And, and uh, what was I talking about? Uh, the devil will flee from you. And he said, he told us, he says, I love coming to these meetings because binding and loosing. <laughs> I don't think he knew what he was talking about, but he just loved the fact that we, we, would, we would bind the works of darkness. And he loved it. We tried to explain it to him. And we also tried, you know, in his high education, I don't know if he got it, but he would also say, he would also say, you guys always saying, the blood, the blood. And that's the way he said it, the blood. In other words, the blood of Jesus. But that's where, that's the power. He had to shed his blood for the remission of our sins. And, you know, you think high church people will get that. But anyway, but I, I, I marvel at the fact that it's so simple. You resist the devil and he flees from you. And we need to be doing that in the coming year. I, I don't care if you, it's not your style. You need to be binding the enemy from his work. Where he, where he touches the, 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 the earth and so on and so forth, you can bind him. You can bind him with authority. Amen? On earth as it is in heaven. Verse 8, come near to God and he will come near to you. Notice it's not reversed. We come to God. If we come to God, then he draws near to us. Don't believe anything else but that. That's the scripture. That's the word. And in the coming year, we have to draw near to God. That, that, that's, it's, it's such a simple thing. How many of you have a roof over your head? Mm -hmm. Amen. Y'all got a roof? God's giving you a roof. That's your prayer closet. The Lord wants you to spend time with him in the coming year, this year, to spend time with him, and to spend time with him in prayer, and to not pray the rehearsed prayers, now I lay me down to sleep type of prayers, but to really, like Ed and Donna were talking about, targeted prayers, like Phyllis talks about, pr target your prayer, specifically, what, what you want to see God do in the coming year, speak it to him, talk to him, sp uh, use his word, Lord, your word declares this is what, uh, what's supposed to happen. And believe God. You, you go before him. You go before him and just get alone with him. And get quiet with him. And let him, let him introduce himself to you again. Amen? In a powerful way. Everybody, not just the preacher. Everybody in the church needs to do that. To spend time to God. To draw near to him. And to actually pray. And to actually worship outside of church. In your home. Worship. You looking at me like, Pastor Ed, you haven't heard me sing. <laughs> Listen. I, I, by the way, I've heard you sing. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. And you're good. You're all right. You're good. But God loves when you sing to him. He don't care if you're on key. He doesn't care. Amen. The praise team might, but God doesn't care. But how does your dad sing? The joyful noise. Yeah. I mean, you... you you know he's next to you, and you know he's giving God glory. And it's a noise. It, it doesn't say, you know, sing a symphony to me. It's a noise. That's what the angels are for. It's yeah, the, the angels. They let, let the angels clean it up. That's right. Amen. But it, and, and you get alone with God, and, and, and then you read his word. And you don't not only read his word, but you soak in his word. You know, you, you repeat his word. That's not, that's not Eastern meditation. That's... You digesting his word so his word can come through you. And, and, and so I encourage you in the coming year to take that time and spend that time with the Lord. And I know you're busy. I'm busy too. I got a lot of things I have to do. I have to schedule golf and tennis and badminton and whatever. And, you know, no, I'm just kidding with you. But, you know, we're busy people, but we've got to take time for God. And it's not just for the pastor who has to get a sermon every week. It's for you too. Keep the word of God fresh in your heart. Amen? Then he says, wash your hands, you sinners. That's good advice for, uh, for the uh, 
what we've been through in the coming years. Everybody got to wash their hands. Well, there's a hand washing in the kingdom of God. It's called purifying your heart. And you can purify your heart. How do you do that? You go before the Lord and realize that he shed his blood on the cross for your sins. To be saved from them and to be cleansed from them. Yes, the word of God says you're to be cleansed from your sin. You know what the word cleansed mean? Clean. It's out of your life. It's not there anymore. John says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Wow. So it's not just getting, you know, getting, get, getting saved, get, getting somewhat free. It's having him cleanse all the garbage out of your life in the coming year. John, did you have something? Yes, I did. He gets rid of it as far as the east, east. is from the Ooh, west. Come on. Thank you, John. Amen. Let John preach. All right. Your turn. You can, you can read this better than I can, I guarantee it. Hallelujah. Come on, John. Uh, then verse 9, he says, and this is in reference to sin. All right? It's not in reference to your normal life. It's just, he says, uh, I didn't finish it, right? Purify your hearts, you double-minded. He calls them double-minded. If you look at James, he uses that so many times. Here's loving Pastor James saying to his people, you all are double-minded. You know, how would you like to hear that? But, but it, and he is, I challenge you to read the book of James. Don't take long. It's only a few chapters. And you'll see, he's always saying, you're double-minded, you're double-minded. Why do you think he said that? Because they're double-minded. Because they have their mind, they may have their mind on God, but they also got their mind on a million different other things. Wishy-washy. Yeah, wishy-washy is right. So he says, grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter into mourning and your joy to gloom. About your sin. Not about your life. Not about what he's doing in your life. That brings joy and peace and happiness and forgiveness. But he says, grieve, mourn, wail because of your sin. Get it out of your life. And when you do that, verse 10 you, be, you walk in humility. Verse 10 says, Humble yourselves before the Lord, and He will lift you up. Praise God. You see, all I'm, all I'm worried about is, is listening to God, is listening to what He has to say. Susan and I are talking about things to happen in the church or whatever, but before they happen, we want to hear from God. We want to know it's God speaking. Amen. We don't want to just we don't want to do another Bible study. We don't want to do another program. We don't want to do another outreach. We don't want to do anything unless God is speaking to us and telling us to do it. Amen. Otherwise, you know, the, the scripture even says, "Lest the Lord builds the house, we labor in vain." Amen. So we've got to let the Lord be building our houses in the coming year. And he says, "If you humble yourselves, what is he going to do? He's going to lift you up." We live in an age where self-promotion is rampant out there. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to get your name out there. You got to get your, you got to get your face out there. You got to get famous. You got to. Last thing in the world I want to do. Last thing, amen. Mm -hmm. So full submission. He goes on to say, <clears throat> verse eleven: Full submission, brothers and sisters, do not slander. Don't tell false stuff. This is the year we're going to get all false stuff out of our mouth. All backbiting. We're going to get it out. Amen? We're going to get it out. Can anybody give me an amen? Amen. Don't slander one another. Anybody who speaks against his brother or sister judges and speaks against the law and judges it. In other words, God, your, your, word, doesn't, your word doesn't do enough, so I'm going to help you out. How many, of you, how many of you believe God needs a helping hand? Anybody believe that? Mm -hmm. Good. I'm glad. Because he doesn't need our help. Right? He doesn't. We think we're junior Holy Spirits, and we're not. We're not junior Holy Spirits. Praise God. Verse 12. There is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. And that's the Lord. But who are you to judge your neighbor? Now, I love, you see that word slander up there with the asterisk next to it? The word there is diablos in the Greek. So when he's saying, do not slander, he's saying, do not devil. Don't be like the devil. The devil slanders. 
And so we need to be very, very careful of slander, helping the Lord, and so on and so forth, bringing down false charges, false statement on people. Amen? And lastly, he says this in verse 13. Listen, you who say, today or tomorrow, and I, I love that he gives an example of, of how we don't act in humility a lot of times. He shows us how we want to be in control of our life instead of letting him be in control. And so he gives this example. He says, listen, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to that city or spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why do you not, e do you not even know what, would hap what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? And watch what he says about us. And you know, when I take this next sentence seriously in my life, a lot of mighty things are going to happen in my life. He says, you are a mist that appears for a little while and vanishes. And so, beloved, let me tell you something. If I am a mist, then I'm going to do everything I possibly can to get the power of God in my life. Amen? Because he will give me his power. He will put authority in your life. He will anoint you. Praise God. Oh, that's good preaching, Ed. Amen. He, Amen. he will anoint you for what you need when you begin to realize without him what you really are and what I really am. Praise God. I told you, when I got saved, I knew who I was. I was, I was a nobody. I was a nothing. I wasn't anybody. People would have thought differently, but I didn't care because I knew I needed God. I needed help. I needed to be what, what, it was, what I wanted it to be, but it was to be what God wanted it to be. Amen? So he says, instead, you ought to say this. If it is the Lord's will, we will live and we will do this or that. Amen? So we're not taking steps on our own anymore. We're going the Lord's way. Amen? He's going to help us because we're just mists. We're little misty people, but he's strong. Glory to his name. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. That's what he calls them. If we do stuff without God, we do stuff without his direction, he calls them arrogant schemes. Hmm. That word is strong. Amen? I told you James is loving, didn't I? Hmm. Arrogant schemes that we do. How about that? Little old me. Arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. That's a powerful word right there. He says if you know it's, you're supposed to be doing this and you don't do it, it's sin for you. Amen? And so, you know, I don't want to be uh, involved in any arrogant schemes or anything. I don't want to be living my life and doing this and doing that and, and, and saying, yeah, God... You know, God wanted me to do this and that and the other thing. And it's not God. It isn't. Now, I want to read this final blessing from James this morning. And then I want to pray for everybody. But uh, this is just awesome. James 1.12 uh, says this. And this is, uh, this is for all of us this morning. Amen. And I believe it's, it's necessary for us to look at this. It says, blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. This is James 1, chapter 1. Because having stood the test, having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Now, you might not know what the crown of life is. There's five different crowns that the Bible talks about. I'm not going to go through all five crowns, but I am going to go through the one that we see on the screen here, the crown of life. Because a crown, this type of a crown, the crown of life, is a special reward for people. It's a special reward. Now, I want you to put trials on, on this hand, and I want you to put reward on the other hand. Because you may think, these trials are hard. These trials are difficult. These, these trials are getting under my skin. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? And it could be a trial brought by the world. It could be a trial brought by a person very near to you. Mm -hmm. But God says there's a blessing if you persevere under trial. 
And that blessing is the crown of life. God is going to give to people that are strong, that stand up against the powers of darkness. He's going to give a person the crown of life at the end. I'm telling you, when we go to glory, if we've persevered under trial, we're going to have one of these. And everybody there is going to know that, you know, let's take Helen back there. All right, she's got the crown of life on. Oh, she was an overcomer. I don't happen to have one of those, Helen, but you do. See what I'm saying? The people that are persevering right now, God's remembering what we're going through. God's saying, I'm going to give you power. I'm going to give you strength. But I've got something waiting for you at the finish line that's going to be awesome. And that's what the crown of life was. It was a, a prize that was put on a runner's head in the Roman games. It was, a, it, was a, it was a crown that was worth a lot. Amen? And they got it because it was a reward. Because it, but it was a reward for submission. Praise God. And I want to tell you this morning that God will not forget your submission. God will, God will not forget it. He's going to remember and that's why I'm saying we, we live in a new year now. And this is a promise that God has made for full submission or for fully submitting to him. That he's going to give us the crown of life. Amen. We, we spent many times with many charismatics uh, have this opinion that I don't want any rewards. I don't want any rewards. Well, why not? God is saying that you should want this. You should want to persevere and you should want this crown. And I pray at the end of our lives, amen, that we, we, we receive this crown. That people from Open Door Church or people who are listening to the messages will receive that crown of life one day. And will rejoice, amen, because it's for eternity. And so God doesn't just have us blessed here on this earth, but he also has us blessed in eternity, amen? And so he's got it all covered. So it's time to submit, beloved. It's time to submit. It's time to throw everything on the altar. It's time to throw our aspirations and everything. Now, God has maybe has given us dreams, and we need to hold on to those. But our own dreams, our own personal dreams, amen, give them over to God. Let him take them. Let him, let him remake your life in the coming year, amen. He wants to remold us and remake us. Praise God. And it's going to be glorious and wonderful when we get there. Amen. It's, it's very difficult to enjoy a revival full of sin, full of darkness. And God wants to change that. He really does because there's a revival coming. Amen. We're going to have some of that heaven on earth. We really are. I believe it. I believe it with all my heart. It's in the, it's in the number of the, of the year that we're going to have a, you know, a, Part of this year is, is, is a run up to a jubilee. And so in September, there's a new jubilee that's going to start. Amen. And I believe that's going to be a beginning of a revival. And God's going to do that in our life. But he wants us to be able to enjoy it. And we're going to be able to enjoy it when we fully submit to him. Father, we thank you. We love you. We thank you for your word. As we pray today, Lord, I pray right now, blessings over each family. As we come, Lord, as we come to be prayed for this morning, I believe that we are submitted to you. We are resisting the devil, and he's going to flee from us. I believe we're drawing near to God, and Lord, you're going to draw near to us. I believe that means that we're going to pray, we're going to intercede. I believe that's going to be in our homes, that we're going to find a place to intercede and believe you for the coming year and believe you for revival in our families. I thank you, Lord, and I give you glory. I give you glory for everybody in this room and for each family. And so as we bless them, as we bless them, Father, I pray that the favor of the Lord is upon them strongly and mightily, Father. We declare it in Jesus' name, and we thank you, Lord, for each and every family in our church, whether it's a family of one or it's a family of 20, or, or many and many grandchildren and great-grandchildren, we believe that as we pray this morning, as we pray that these things that we pray about and for will come forth prophetically on lives and hearts, and that, Lord, you're going to do these mighty things in the coming year. Holy Spirit, come now. Give us the words. 
Holy Spirit, come and give us the words that encourage, I pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.